Hey guys, Gecko Guy here. So here I am just showing a little um my my mealworm colony breeding. Um a little breeding project here. So I took the liberty of individually picking out the live and the dead, both mealworms and waxworms. That was a trip in itself. So here I am just showing you guys what I use for my uh my bug breeding. I use the absolute cheapest oats, cheapest brand cereal, and cheapest honey that I can find. I chose a sugar-free honey for that one. It doesn't really matter. It was the cheapest one. Honey is honey. They, these guys love this stuff. You can also use uh, carrots and um, potatoes and uh, let's see what else. You can use that crystal water gel, uh, polyacrylamide, copolymer gels. Um, can use that. You, there's uh, plenty of options for water sources. You can use Rapashi Bug Burger. They like that as well. Um, so mix it up. They are what they eat. Um, you know, it would be very boring to eat fries every single day. You know, fries and a burger, fries and a burger and a drink. You know, you want to change it up. Okay, so um, here I am just dumping in some oats. And this was the first layer, and my stupid self should have taken out the little um, paper towel tubes. <laughs> and don't worry guys, I didn't forget about my awesome animal subscribers, my reptile guys, animal enthusiasts, and um, we're going to be getting some more animals here pretty soon. I'm going to be getting myself a pair of hedgehogs, uh, male and female, hopefully I can do some breeding projects for that see how that goes but anyways guys here I am just uh, taking off these paper towel tubes and I left these in very cheap little Dollar Tree um, paper towel tubes and whoa look at all those beetles all those darkling beetles okay so I don't know how many beetles I have I didn't take the liberty of counting that but probably estimated a good 75 to 100 I don't know um, probably would have been a little bit more if I would have gotten the food a lot earlier, but yeah, it is what it is. And um, I, I went and picked out all the pupa and, out of the mealworm tank, put it all in there, and it was probably a good 75 to 100 as well. And here I am just taking some bran. Uh, some cheap, cheap, cheap brand flakes. Uh, it's the Great Scent stuff at Walmart. It was like two or three bucks, two and a half. Just crush it up a bit. Uh, makes it easier to siphon out the worms and beetles from the uh, the brand cereal. And you could probably crush it up even finer than that. This was just a rough mock-up because I haven't done this in a while. I didn't feel like taking the time to crush each flake individually um, in a larger scale. I just kind of took it in my hand, crushed it up a bit. But uh, if you crush it up to a finer powder or finer dust, it's a lot easier and can uh, separate the frass from the worms, from the beetles uh, very efficiently. Okay, and here I am just going to take the honey and I just blurb it around. Blub, blub, blub. Yeah, whoa. Hello. And watch all these beetles. They know when it's in there. They'll come running. And then, see, look, look at, there's one on the bottom right, or middle, center, I should say. Oh, yeah. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. Okay, here I am just getting a nice little stream around so they all come around here. And I kind of got on that little one's back. Okay. So here I am just uh, changing my pan, uh, my shots here, zooming in, showing these beetles love this kind of stuff. Looks like we got that one. Yep, there we go. There's that beetle on the right, just uh, going to town on the honey. They love honey. And this the good thing about the honey is it'll stick in the, uh, in the little substrate here. Uh, for uh, quite some time and it does dry out over time but it does 
retain a little bit of moisture so at least they have a water source for a little bit and every every few days or so you know you want to just check it um, check to see if it's dry or if it needs some and you don't want to put too much in and have those paper towel tubes covering it up too much because that's how mold grows and I don't even use lids for these guys because um, they can't crawl out I suppose if you want to use a lid that is definitely your choice and here I am just oh we got another one deciding to be an escapee mm. Okay, so, got that one all sticky-stucky in the honey, but, um, like I was saying, if check it every couple of days, uh, make sure it's not too dry, not too damp, and, you know, if you're, if you want to use a lid, that is totally your choice, that probably be helpful if you put it on a high area, or you accidentally step on it, and there goes your big stack of beetles. Um, so that's just a little tip there. Um, I don't, I, I have it on a really high shelf, so I, I don't think the cat can get at it. And it's at the far left corner of my shelf. So I really don't worry about it too much. Um, and then it's easier for me just to take it and, uh, get my beetles and get my worms. So two, two, uh, paper towel tubes is all it really needs. Uh, it's not like crickets where you need to go completely overboard. And here I am bringing in the mealworms, and look at all that. I had to pick out all the pupa, and that's what I did in this next uh, clip after here. Um, and there's a couple of spare beetles that were kind of just dead and lying there. And uh, there were a couple of freshly molted beetles that just came out of their pupa state. And generally with those, I like to wait until they're an orangish color before I try to pick them up and move them. And if I'm um, really anxious to pick them up. I'll get like a toothpick or something, let them walk on it, then I'll transfer them to the beetle uh, beetle cage. So here we are. I don't know how many this is. Please don't ask. That's a freaking metric bunch ton. Okay, so here I am. Going to do another little cut shot. Okay, here we go. And I put them all off to the corner. Just to show you that there's a pretty big volume of them. And again, um, we get our layer of oats, a couple of layers of oats. And the oats here for just basic, basic, basic was like a dollar and a half for a good 10 or 12 pouches there. Don't know how many, but I have like two or three left over. I could add those at any given time. So this whole setup here costs like just under $10. Um... You know, I got your Dollar uh, Dollar Tree um, Tupperwares here. You got maybe two bucks worth of oats and another three bucks worth of um, three bucks worth of bran cereal, and then your honey. It's another three and a half. It shouldn't be too much, um, and if it is over ten dollars, it shouldn't be that much over. But um, generally, for a colony like this. Um, of a thousand or so um, that's what I started with and it turned into all this and a continuous huge colony like that um, I honestly did not need to do anything to this colony in such a long time but I decided you know um, I'll just keep them alive I'll keep them going and I don't really sell them I'm just kind of kind of doing it just to do it but uh, I'd like to do my hornworm and silkworm projects like I said I would do a long time ago it's just I haven't had time with uh, going to school and having a job and trying to do YouTube. So it was hard enough trying to do this video and take the time that it needs to do a voiceover and do all the editing that's necessary. So thank you all for watching. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe as always. And if there's a reptile video you'd like to see, please post that in the comment section below. And I will be sure to do a snippet of that and give you credit.